This video will talk about the estimation of dynamic causal effects. First, we talk about the distributed lag model. Second, we talk about the estimation of dynamic causal effect with the exogenous regressors X. Third, we talk about the distribution of the OLS in this case. Finally, we take a look of the ADL model and GLS model to see how to modify the problem of serial correlation of error terms. Okay, let's get started. First is the distributed lag model. This is the distributed lag model. The yt is a function of x with the lag of x. So compared to previous case, the time series regression model, yt is maybe a function of the yt minus 1 or yt minus 2 up to yt minus p. Those are the AR model. Here, we do not have the auto regressive. We just have the distributed lag model. So that means y just depends on other variables. Okay. Well, here, you need to know two cons two exogeneity concepts. One is called exogeneity, which is equal to the expected value of the error term t, given time t, time t minus 1 up to all the time, all the horizon of x is 0. Okay, so the other concept is called a strictly exogeneity. This is expected value of ut given all the value up to xt plus 2, xt plus 1, xt n, xt minus 1, xt minus 2, up to all the x is equal to 0. So strictly exogeneity is much more strong much stronger because it's also need to assume that the future x does not affect the present error terms okay so next we will talk about the estimation of the dynamic causal effect so before we go to the estimation of the distributed lag model we need to make some assumptions of the distributed lag model First one, okay, is the expected value of the error term given xt, xt minus 1 up to the n is 0. So we assume this is exogenous, but not strictly. Well, we will, we will take a look of the strictly exogenous assumptions in the part 4, okay. So second, yt and xt are stationary. Uh, this is important, otherwise we cannot make any good estimators. So there are no break or no trend, okay. And the distribution of xt and yt and yt minus j and xt minus j will become more and more independent when j increase so giving longer time yt minus j and xt minus j has no effect on xt and yt so for large outliers are unlikely so this is just usual Assumptions finally no perfect multicollinearities. Okay, so you can see all these four assumptions does not pose any restriction on the UT. Well, actually, the UT can be auto correlated. Okay, say the crop yields is equal to the lag of the fertilizer you apply plus some error term and the error term may be the weather okay and today's weather may be correlated with tomorrow's weather if today is a very rainy day tomorrow may also be a rainy day so the ut and ut minus one can have some relations so we post no restriction on the ut ut may be serially correlated but if ut is serially correlated we need to make some adjustment in estimating the beta in particular, we will use the different standard error. We call this the 
pectoral scatacity and autocorrelate autocorrelation consistent standard error and we will take a look later okay so after these assumptions we will go to the distribution of the OLS now the OLS model changed a little bit it's no longer yi equal to beta 0 plus beta 1xi plus ui because we are looking at one entity therefore at different time so this become yt equal to beta 0 plus beta 1xt plus ut so the beta 1 is equal to similar things but you rewrite all the average to be to with respect to time t So still the covariance between x and u derived by the variance of x. Then by the law of large number, they will become the numerator will become x t minus mu x times the error term u t. And the denominator is the variance <coughs> variance of the x. Okay. And keep it sim by simplicity, I just assume the covariance between x and u to be V T. Okay. And this is V bar derived by sigma x squared. Okay. So we can see that the variance of beta one hat. So variance of beta one hat is the variance of constant, so zero plus the variance of these term. This term is equal to v bar divided by the variance of x. So this is equal to the variance of v bar times the variance of x square. Okay. So what is variance of v bar? Variance of v bar is equal to variance of v1 plus v2 plus dot 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 up to vt derived by t. Okay. So this is equal to variance of v1. Okay. Now the error term is serially correlated, not iid. That means you need to take care of the covariance between v1 and v2 plus covariance of v1 and v3 up to covariance of v1 to vt okay then you finish the first combination the second one is plus covariance of v2 and v1 plus variance of v2 plus covariance of v2 and v3 plus up to covariance of v2 and vt okay and you do the same things for the v3 and v1 v4 and v1 up to finally that is the variance of vt okay you need to add up to this then derive by t So by some algebraic manipulation, this is equal to t times variance of vt. You have t number of variance of v1, v2, v3 up to vn plus 2 times t minus 1 of the covariance vt and vt minus 1 plus 2 times t minus 2 number of covariance of vt and vt minus 2 and until 2 times covariance of vt and vt minus t plus r plus 1 and divided by t squared so this is equal to variance of v divided by t times a term ft whereas ft is equal to 1 plus 2 you call that all the term times j equal to 1 to t minus 1 times t minus j divided by t times the correlation of the j okay 
So this is the variance. Variance times the covariation will become the covariance. Because the variance is the standard deviation of two variables. Then times the covariation coefficient. That has become the covariance. So this just collecting the term. Okay. So here you can see that the variance of beta 1 hat equal to the variance of V. Variance of V is this term. So 1 divided by T times the variance of V squared. Then derived by the square of the variance of X then times F T. Okay. So how do you estimate this beta 1 hat? You use the HAC variance. Hydroscedasticity and autocorrelation co consistent variance. So if you estimate this is equal to variance of beta 1 hat square. So this term is the first term here times the estimation of Ft. Okay. So this term is easy to understand. So you estimate by the residuals. How about Ft? Ft is the estimate of the autocorrelations. So Ft hat is equal to some formula. Similar to the second term here. So you use this formula to estimate the true value. So this rho j tilde is equal to sum of t from j plus 1 to t times the vt hat and vt hat, vt plus 1 hat derived by sum of t from 1 to t vt hat squared. Okay, so some covariance derived by variance term. So this is the way to uh, understand the distribution of the beta 1 hat in this distributed lag model.